Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Hello, hola, privet, konnichiwa, yabuseo, all of the above. Hey guys, how are you doing? I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend, that you guys are having a great Sunday. My goodness, we're about to enter into June 1st. Some of you, you're already there, um, but we're coming up where I'm at. Um, we're, we're entering into June 1st pretty soon, and I just can't believe how quickly we're going through the year. We are pretty much halfway through it, my brothers and sisters. But I want to get into this message and this thing that the Lord has laid on my heart that I want to share with my brothers and sisters. As you can tell from the times things are closing up, whether you believe it or not, whether you are Christian or not, whether you believe in God or not, it does not hinder and it's not going to alter what is truly to come, what's surely to come. And as we look at the signs of the times, we see that things are winding up. And um, there's some things that the Lord has laid on my heart that I need to talk to you guys about as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And one of those things is... One of the ways of getting your house in order, my brothers and sisters, it's all going to boil down to people, people, other people, how you're treating them, okay? Matthew chapter 22, 36 through 40 is where the disciples said to the Lord, I want to say it might have been a lawyer, an attorney that was asking the Lord a question, and he wanted to know what is the greatest commandment, and he said the first the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And then the second greatest is that we love our neighbor as ourself. There's a great error that is going on in the body of Christ right now. And the Lord has put it in my heart to share with you all that many, 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 many people are going to miss God based on simply how they treated people how they treat people now some of you may say no i'm actually nice to people i'm good to people but here's the thing that god wants us to really be careful of a lot of times who we're nice to and who we're good to depends on is well who you're nice and you're good to and you're kind to are people that's within your circle people that are in your church people that are in your community, people that's in your household, of your race, of your culture. And a lot of people are not going outside of that. Also, a lot of the works that people are doing, the charity work, the things that people are doing, the giving, God is revealing to me and want you all to be aware of the fact that a lot of times these things are done with ulterior motives. One being simply to be seen by men. A lot of the given, a lot of things that people do. Now, let me stop here by saying this does not apply to everybody. But God wants every one of us to be mindful of the small, deeply ingrained notions and intentions that a lot of people are not aware of. And then there's some they're aware of it. There is this lie, there is this deception that many believe that you're going to make it into heaven because you're given. You're going to make it into heaven because you've done a bunch of good things. You're going to make it into heaven because how you've been nice and you bought a house for your pastor or you bought a house for this and you did that and you did this. But God is calling his people to take a look at your heart. What is your motive? What drives you? Many people cannot do things in secret because it must be publicized. They want everyone to know what they're doing. Their left hand must know what their, this is my left, my left, the left hand must know what the right hand is doing. There must be a trumpet sounded in the streets to say, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to tell you that even in some things that you're doing and you're recording it now, not all the time is this wrong because I've seen where it's been an encouragement to me to see people being, see acts of kindness on camera and on film. Um, and it's good to see because what else are we seeing? We're seeing a bunch of violence. We've seen a bunch of bad things. So there's nothing wrong with isolated incidents or moments that you share, but don't always be in a habit of recording everything and broadcasting 
everything that you're doing. There are people that everything got to be on film. Everything got to be on camera. And what the Lord wants us to realize is this. And I saw someone post this before. Is you must realize that the person that you are filming is a human being. The person that you are putting on film is a human being. So we can't dehumanize and record someone in their lowest state. You see, God is not pleased. This is still a person whether they were in dirty clothes, eating out the trash, whatever it may be. So sometimes we still have to guard the privacy and the already the shame that the person's already feeling. So there must be uh, there must be discernment with what needs to be filmed and what does not. However, there are people who they have to put everything on camera and everyone got to see it. And these are the types of things that People are going to be sadly mistaken because they are so used to the the lights and the flashing cameras and, and see me do this, see me do this. See, I'm going over here to this country and I'm feeding the poor. But God is saying a lot of times the intent inside of the heart and these actions have nothing to do with the Lord. God is saying it's all going to boil down to people, how you're treating people. People are getting, a lot of the children of the Lord, a lot of people that say that they believe in God, they're really doing a lot of works, but their heart is not in the place that God wants it to be. Because your good works are, are aimed at certain kind of people, while others you will not. One of the biggest things that many believers need to break out of is that people tend to want to have their little groups that they're helping. People are not going outside of the boundaries of their culture, outside of the boundaries of their denominations. They're not going outside of the boundary of racial differences, cultural differences. And so you find the people that they're helping and the people that they're doing work with are always within their own community and inside their own church. They don't care about the visitor once the visitor has come and gone. They don't care about the person in the church once they've come and gone. If they're no longer in their church, no one, everyone breaks ties with this person. And God is calling his people to a place of realizing what it means to truly love. Loving your neighbor as yourself, which is the second greatest commandment, is not just people in your denomination. It's not just people in your community. It's not just people in your church. It's not just people of your race. It's not people of your social status or your economical status. And there are many people that the Lord is saying, many of his children that will hear, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness, depart from me. I never knew you. There are many that's going to hear, when I was hungry, you did not feed me. When I was naked, you did not clothe me. When I had no home, you did not let me in. Why? Because you only did it to certain people. <laughs> you didn't help someone outside of your comfort zone. You didn't go outside of your comfort zone so my brothers and sisters we have to be very 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 careful with that it boils down to how you're treating people it boils down to how you're dealing with people my brothers and sisters people are prophesying people are preaching hard people are going hard on social social plat social media platforms people are going hard in their churches or will be they were doing it before covid 19 once it lifts they're going to go back to that people are doing all these different things people are packing baskets for the poor they're doing all these different things but their heart is not truly about that a lot of times people are doing things for tax breaks a lot of times people are doing this to get funding a lot of times people are doing these things for ulterior motives and other reasons that has no nothing to do with the Lord. And one of the biggest things that the Lord is showing me is that people are just caught up in their own little group. You will help this person. And one of the things that uh, you will help this person, but not that person. You're going to help these type of people, but not those type of people. And what God is saying is that there's too much um, categorizing. There's too much, too many uh, lines that are drawn to say, I will do this, but I will not do that within the body of Christ. I am only going to help these people 
people, but not that people. What is happening is within the body of Christ, they're not truly putting everything together and having all things in common. If somebody, even within, even within your own churches or your community, sometimes people are hungry and, and thirsty and going through things by themselves because, well, that has nothing to do with me. That's sister so-and-so. That's brother so-and-so. That's them. That's not us. That We don't hang with them. We hang with pastor them. We don't hang with them. We hang with these certain types of people. We don't hang with these people. We don't eat with these people. So what is going on, my brothers and sisters? Those little tiny things that you think is no big deal. Every time when church was open and you just went with your group and went to eat, when that man or woman, that stranger came to your church and sat in there and walked home by themselves and you drove past in your car or whatever you did and left that person walking, you went uh, uh you went to eat on your own. You didn't invite somebody. This thing that people have, once people leave your church, you have nothing to do with them. Oh, I'm only about my people, my church. My brothers and sisters, these are the things that the Lord is saying. is going to cause many to hear, I never knew you. Because you remember the Lord, Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus gave this parable about how we're supposed to forgive and we're supposed to love. And then he also says, you know, you're supposed to greet. How are you different if you only greet those that you know? If you only greet your brethren, how are you different from the publicans? Do they, the publican and tax collectors, do they not do the same thing? And he was talking about how when people want only going to talk to people they like and not greet the person that they don't like. But another thing that the Lord is showing me is how it's also sin to only greet and to look out for people you like, you know, that's in your church, your community, your race, your group, that you know, your clique. That's another sin. So my brothers and sisters, it's going to boil down to how you're treating people. Now, this is going to take discernment, believe it or not. So what you need to be asking the Lord to do when you're praying, you pray and ask the Lord that you love people the way he loves them, that you learn to see people through his eyes, that you will treat people the way he ordained for us to treat them because it's not a natural thing to do. This should be your prayer that the Lord will change your heart. It should be your prayer that you love him, that he can teach you by the power of the Holy Spirit, teach you how to truly love him with all your soul, your heart, and your mind, and how to really love your neighbor as yourself. This is my prayer, my brothers and sisters. You need to be able to reach out your hands to the stranger and help them as you would someone you really know very well. You need to be able to have compassion for people that you don't know, compassion outside of your church, compassion that does not require you to be recording, things that everybody don't need to know that you did, my brothers and sisters. While there are times that it calls for that, there are many times that you need to do your good deeds in secret because God will reward you up openly and publicly. But a lot of people are doing that anyway because they want to be seen. But the Lord, my brothers and sisters, shared with me today to share with you is that in these last days, many are being caught up in, I'm going to increase my videos. I'm going to increase and do all my good deeds and I'm going to increase and I'm going to do this and that and that. But God is saying he's calling us to pay attention to how we are dealing with those to our left and to our right, to the strangers, to the widows, to the foreigners, to those who are not in your circle, my brothers and sisters. There are a lot of people who are broken that you all pass every day. There are a lot of people that walk with a bunch of money in their purse or on their debit card that will drive past a homeless person on the street to go put all their money in the church and think that they've done well. There's a lot of people that would do all types of good deeds, but it's to be seen and to be known and for notoriety and nothing to do with God. So in these last days, my brothers and sisters, Cleaning house meaning doing a heart check. Asking the Holy Spirit to shed his light inside of your heart and show you where you're at. Because there are many people I hear the Lord saying that's going to miss him. That's going to miss him. And it's going to boil down to how you treated people. How you treated people. 
because what's happening, God is saying people are being very, del very deliberate in who they're going to be nice to, who they're going to bless, who they're not going to bless, rather than being led by the Spirit of God. There's a lot of people that's doing things only for a certain type of people, certain group of people, and with an intent in your heart that displeases the Lord and has nothing to do with God. Remember the Lord described the Pharisees that wanted the big trumpets and, and to, to be seen and to be heard and to declare what they've done and to sit in high seats and to be noticed by man. And God says they have their reward. But the reward, the reward that they will get will not be his reward. So in these last days, my brothers and sisters, and in your last days, talk about the last days, but let's talk about your last days because we don't know when our time will be. Ensure that you are walking in obedience to the Lord. Ensure that you are doing the things that he has told you to do. Be mindful of how you are treating people. Be mindful of how you are distributing your goods to the people. Who are you blessing? Who are you looking out for? When was the last time you called up somebody that you haven't seen in church in a long time? And it wasn't just to do that funny, Christian, fuddy-duddy, weird call. Hey, okay, that phony stuff. True, genuine caring. When was the last time you broke bread with a stranger? When's the last time you invited a stranger to eat and gave them something that did not involve you just, you know what, well, let me just do something today. But truly because you had compassion for them. When's the last time you made someone else's problem your problem that was not in your group, your circle? How we treat people is what it's going to boil down to. How we love people, how we fail to love people, how you treat the stranger, how you treat someone who's no longer in the body of Christ, how you treat a person you don't know, how you treat someone who's of a different race, different color, different everything. This, These are the things that the Lord is going to be judging us on and talking to you about, talking to me about. So let's do a complete cleaning on the inside, my brothers and sisters, so that we will be walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, that we will do what pleases the Lord and not what pleases man. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. It's 17 minutes and counting. I pray that you guys have continued on and watched this video to this end with me. Be blessed.